In this video, we'll be looking at cleaning and maintenance of your home espresso machine. A major difference between a home user and a professional cafe is the cleaning side of things. When you've invested money on a home coffee machine to produce great tasting third wave specialty coffee, the last thing you want is for the machine to become faulty due to not cleaning it properly. There are two main reasons for this. The first is that making coffee on a clean machine will lead to a nicer tasting cup of coffee. My mantra is a clean machine equals a clean coffee. The second reason is that a clean machine will improve the longevity of your coffee machine. Your coffee machine has many moving parts and you want to keep them free from stale grinds and calcified milk as possible. In this video, I'll be covering the four main areas, two around cleaning and two around maintenance that you need to regularly address in your home espresso machine. The first part we'll be covering is how to clean your group head. We achieve this by doing two things, purging and performing a back flush. This is essential because a lot of residual coffee and grounds build up in the group head. If these linger around, they'll really affect the taste of your coffee and can cause issues with the machine. Purging means you run water through it before and after every shot. You should also back flush your machine regularly. You can do this by using the blind filter. It's the circular rubber piece that pops into the porter filter like this. Insert the porter filter into the group head and run a shot. This is designed to make the machine pressure on like it's brewing a shot. And this will flush all the water and residual grinds through the machine into the drip tray, cleaning the group head and the internal pipes. Note that if you have a Bambino, this process isn't required as the cleaning is all inclusive in the one process. The second part we're covering is focused on the steam wand, and this will be purging, wiping, and giving a deeper clean of the tip. Your machine is designed to expel extremely hot steam at high pressure from the tip of your wand in order to produce sufficient microfoam. Purge prior to use. Do this by opening your steam wand to clear out any condensation or water and milk buildup in your machine before you start to texture. Then immediately after texturing, you should wipe the steam wand with a clean, damp cloth and purge again, just like your local cafe does it. For good hygiene, it's really important to have a dedicated cloth for your steam wand and a separate cloth to wipe the machine and the bench. It doesn't take long for milk to dry and calcify onto your hot wand. If this occurs, it can produce a crusty layer that will block the holes and prevent the right pressure and steam entering the milk to produce silky microfoam. To address this, at least once a week, I would suggest soaking the whole tip in a cleaning solution or boiling hot water. You can even use the milk jug for this part. To clean the wand tip further, remove the tip from the end and using the cleaning tool provided, poke the holes that might start to get blocked with crusty milk. A good motto for cleaning the steam wand is to soak, then poke. Now, if you have one of our automatic milk texturing machines, Returning the steam wand to the home position after wiping will prompt an auto purge function. To summarize, you only get the best and consistent milk texture to produce beautiful latte art when you keep the steam wand clean. Part three and my first maintenance tip involves the water filter. We have two types of filters in our machines that vary depending on the model. One, a Claris Fist filter, and two, a charcoal filter. It makes sense that the cleaner your water, the cleaner your coffee. Most of our machines come with a water filter located inside the water tank to reduce impurities, scale content, and excess minerals from entering the machine. Our water filters have a three month lifespan. So changing the water filter regularly every three months will ensure your machine stays clean and coffee taste stays consistent. Depending on the hardness of the water that is being used in the machine, you may need to replace your filter on a more regular basis to avoid frequently descaling. The fourth and last part of we're covering today is descaling. Now you probably know about descaling your kettle. Your coffee machine is no different. Over time, mineral deposits and scale build up on the machine's boilers and internal water parts. The length of time depends on the hardness of the water in your area. The harder the water, the quicker the scale will build up. So like the water filter, when the machine displays descale, 
or per the guidance for your product and region in the instruction booklet, follow the instructions to descale your machine. It keeps everything clean and running smoothly. If you don't descale the machine, it may eventually clog up and stop working. So best to do this when prompted. As a rule for cleaning of domestic machines in home, where say two to five cups of coffee are made a day, some things should be cleaned every week, like the portafilter, the steam one, group head and drip tray. Others we recommend cleaning every two to three weeks, like the grinder and your water tank. And then there are some things that should be cleaned every few months, like your water filter and descaling the machine. You can remove the hopper of your grinder and using your cleaning brush to remove any excess grinds or even using a vacuum for a thorough clean. This will ensure you don't get stale beans and ground coffee building up. Ultimately, you should always have in the back of your mind that a clean machine equals clean coffee.